Boys and girls, Alex here. Lucky you can't see my face, otherwise you'd see the sadness in my eyes. Seeing as how I haven't posted a puzzle for over three weeks. I've been too busy with other shit. Anyway, I'm back with a vengeance. This latest puzzle I call the Star of Alex. It's actually called the Star of David, but my name is Alex. It's not David, so it's the Star of Alex. It comes in two flavours. One is... It consists of six pieces, all exactly the same, with this little diamond-shaped piece tagged on the back of this sort of like a J looking thing. The other one, the other version comes with three of these and three of these with a little triangle instead of the whoa! Oh, hang on, gotta go crawling. God, I do this even when I'm not in the workshop with this little triangle. Now the beauty of that is is that once you've got the puzzle assembled there's actually two ways of solving it the easy way once you've got the puzzle assembled and you get to this stage you can just get this with the triangle on any of the top pieces and that will slot in there just like that and then when you look at the back of it it's the same thing except the difference is that on the bottom there's a triangle while on the top there's this key. Now there is another way of putting it together um, the hard way which is the only way that can be done with this little piece because you'll notice because that's a diamond not a triangle you can't slot it it would sort of go in well, how would it go in? in there like Jesus damn I can't, rem can't even remember how it would go in but it would actually go in um, good God how, how would it go in no the triangles on the other side so it would act anyway however it goes in it slips in shit I'm doing it again I thought I had this uh, all worked out anyway I'll show you the solution for the hard way later on as I said the simple way with this one with the triangle is as you can see there you are that's the one that would normally just slip in there but because that bits there you can't you've got to somehow get it under there which you can't get under there so because of whatever the reason is anyway um, so what I've done is uh, as I said made up the two different versions one's the easy one and the other's the hard one look yeah I won't go into the solution yet this actually does slip in like that I'll just go into how I made this you'll notice that this is uh, oh it falls apart quite easily as well um, because it hasn't got interlocking pieces um, I'll put this aside you'll notice still I haven't used my traditional lamination which I have done on oh this one God, I've, as I said I've been working overboard here's another one I've made sort of like it works on the same principle but uh, um, I nearly chopped me the back of my finger off when I was cutting the dowels for laminating and I thought bugger it I'll just use glue instead while I'm on the bandwagon about how I build the pieces up I might as well reveal my little secret that is not a join it's just a laser engraved line simulating a join and that gives you that cute little pattern there to make that look like two separate pieces but that is just a laser engraved 
Oh, oh that's right, that's the one that won't come apart. So, what I've done is made up this uh, um, little template. It's just a contour to fit around the piece here. Slap it in, get one of these diamonds, put a bit of glue on it, put it in there, hold my finger on it, move that out, let the glue dry and uh, you're laughing. For the other one, for this, no sorry, and that, that particular one will also hold for the, where, where the hell is it, um, for the triangular one because instead of that you just slap it in there put the triangle in and it will hold it however for this other keyed one it's on the flip side so what I did for that is created this different template whereby you get a blank now let's get this right um, where does it go it would normally hang over the edge right like that so you need the blank um, the blank sits there and as you can see if you look at that way the triangle goes you only put glue on half of it the bottom half triangle goes in or the diamond goes in there wait till the glue dries and when you dry you've got that little overhang and you make up these pieces um, until you eventually have it. Now, one of the things I did do with regards to this particular configuration, which is a Type 2 configuration, I actually had to trim this down by about a mil, and conversely, a mil on that edge as well, so that it will slip together properly and you'll see what I mean when I show you how to assemble it. Um, the only problem was I trimmed that down by a mil. That bit goes on there but I didn't how could I say trim that down and as you can see it overhangs by about a mil there. So I have to now go through and take off a mill of all of those and somehow make sure I know uh, which side um, it's up. And what I'll finish up doing is, damned if I know what I'll finish up doing, but I'll put an arrow there to point out which is the side so I won't muck it up during the glue up anyway once I do that um, I'll glue them up I'm not going to bore you with the glue up and then hopefully show you how it's being solved did a bit of uh, designing in SketchUp and came up with this little jig to hold my pieces to permit me to chop an inch uh, an inch a millimeter off that um, it's basically done in SketchUp. The jig, the template, was formulated around the piece, designed to fit in there. That top layer gave it um, a fence, a, a guide to run along the fence, and I moved the blade in, I think, about 4 mil, allowing for the curve. Um, I snuck up on it until I got that right. Um, I put in a hole at the back so I could then poke it out and um, came up with the piece that worked. And when I put the thing together, pause, as in not those paws, slow down. And after trimming all the pieces down, it looked as though it got together. I won't show you how I put it together because I'll save that for the finale. I also did round off some of the corners. I did a lot of playing around. But then I thought, okay, what I need to do is come up with another design 
um, sorry, with the design, but that was a mill shorter there, and I took off a mill on that end to make up for it. That, anyway, I thought, ah, oh, what I also have to do is reduce that diamond by one mil down there as well. Well, lo and behold, um, this is going to give the secret away to some degree, but I tried one pair, one pair, fit beautifully, look at that, you know, couldn't get a cardboard box in there at all. But then when I tried the next pair, look at that gap. And then when I tried to assemble the thing, there was just no way known in hell I could do it. So I thought, bugger it, um, I've got the one with the triangle, I'll leave that. But look, I hate to admit defeat, and I have faith in SketchUp. So I decided, bugger it, let's go one step further. Forget about, well, I've still got a good, but I'll go back to my Dowling way. And hang on, I'll pause it here and I'll set one up so you'll see what I've finished up doing. Here's the six new pieces or combinations with uh, the dowel holes pre-cut on the laser. Then in just a simple case of three toothpicks, one, two, and I'm not going to glue it because gluing up is a bugger because I'm then going to try and manipulate these. Once I put glue around the bottom of that and glue on there, I'm then going to try and manipulate these toothpicks so they'll slide down and glue up. And that now is perfect as compared to these ones. They looked okay, but I could feel ridges. And because the template, where, where the hell is the template? The template, the template, the template, this template was made for this without the mill off it. And I used that, I should have redone that, but it doesn't matter. And I don't mind the toothpicks, bugger it. It gives me a perfect fit, and I have perfect faith in SketchUp. So, I finished up making, this is the second set, I always make two. Um, where is it? Here it is. Um, this one has been polished, buffed, and it's quite good. This is uh, another one. I think this is the one that I, very first one I made. I somehow got it together, but there's no way known I'll be able to pull it apart because I really had to force it. So this is just the look of what it's going to look like. Um, but uh, that's it. Forget that one. Let's grab the other one. That's the one with the triangle. There should be another triangle one somewhere. God Almighty, greatly organized. Put that out of the way. Again, I'll try and go through the assembly of it. Right, this is the assembly with the pieces or the set that's got the triangle on it. Um, this one is relatively easy because if I get this right, um, I hope I've got this right, you put your, your uh, diamonds down first. They become the bottom layer, although I call it the top layer because the thing's there. Anyway, this little triangle now, oh, have I got this right? No, I haven't. That's the way it should go. Although, bear in mind, I haven't played around with this too much. That will now, because it's a triangle, it just fits in there. 
Um, there you go. The next one fits in there beautifully. Yep. And the last one will snugly fit in here. Now as I said, this particular one with the triangle has two solutions. This is the easy way, and the other way is as you would solve the other one. So let's get this out of the way and bring in, where is it? Here we are, the other ones. Now you would do exactly the same with the other one. You'd now make the assumption that that way is naturally still the um, diamond shape and that way would be the triangle on that side. What you do is you pair them up. Then you slip that under there. And this is where exact fit is precise. You do the same with the other piece, other two pieces. They are they're already in position. Then what you've got to do is manipulate this in such a way that you form a triangle there and you form a triangle whoop, there. So you've got your three triangles. Then gently you start squeezing or manipulating. Oh, now this could take me either 30 seconds, uh, one, two seconds, or it could take me an hour. But there you are, I've got it. It suddenly slips together. You're, you're looking at um, point 1.2 point mil clearance, so it's precise. But once you've got those triangles slightly closed, push it together and up you go. But because of those interlocking pieces, you can't put it on top. You have to put it in that way. And to pull it apart naturally, you have to pull out from the inside. You can do the same with this one, but you can also just lift one piece off. As you can see, with this, uh, the one with the, as again, as I call it, the triangle, you can use the same method as that. Um, well, theoretically you can. If you get your triangle, your bloody ducks in a row, Jesus. It's, it's such an exact fit. Now, admittedly, I'll go back to while I'm there, and then I'll show you how these work. You can stop looking, the rest of it is just bullshit fill-in time. Going back to the one where I've hacked it off, it actually came together quite well, and I thought, wow, I'm on a winner. Um, the only problem was certain pieces overhung, that piece overhung there. So I tried to compensate, but you can't, like, reduce it in any way. Um, as I say, falling back onto this Dow alignment principle is the way to go because SketchUp is so precise, cutting it out on the laser is precise. Now, for anybody that is interested, naturally, um, it's a doesn't matter, I haven't put any dimensions into the files I provide, only because they, they're to be used as templates. Um, don't try and measure it out, because the measurements is bullshit. You've got to use the template, lay it out, trace it out, and cut it that way, or use the files to generate CNC or laser vector diagrams. Um, and as I said, once you've got those PDFs, resize the PDF bigger or smaller, but don't try and take measurements and compensate, because I found that by reducing that by, um, what was it, one mil, I actually had to then reduce that by one mil, um, but I couldn't really reduce that size or that size, and as you saw, it just didn't fit together. Well, again, not fitting together was more a case of um, me not gluing it up 100%. Well, actually, that's why this one didn't go together, because I didn't glue it up 100%. I used my little template. Anyway, that's it, boys and girls. Um, oh, for all it's worth, 
Uh, where's that other one? I don't know. I don't think I'll bother making a video of it. Hang on. Oh, shit. Keep the camera. Okay, here's another one I made. Actually, shit, they're just about the same size. In fact, I think they are the same size. Well, they look pretty... Well, they don't actually look similar at all. Um, well, they do. Yeah, they are the same size. Um, they don't look similar, well they sort of look similar but this one has got that little triangle on it which makes it so much more difficult. Now, I've, I've actually put a uh, retainer thing for it, put some felt under it, only because this is so slippery it'll fall apart and once it, this, this other one is self-locking. This one just falls apart, so, and it is, it's quite simple to make up, but it is very simple to make, because it's this crazy L shape, dealt together, and they're, all the pieces are the same. So it's once you start, you just lay them around in a circle. Um, lay them around in a circle. And the last one just slides in like that. So there's well, just slides in like no, it doesn't slide in like that at all. It slides in like that. And there you have it. Look, it's just a cute little puzzle. This one I think I uploaded it and it's called the Megan David Star. However, um, that follows everything. This one, as I said, I call, well, because th this one's different because it's got that uh, triangle there, it's different, and this other one, which has got my Dells, is different, so I'm using that as justification of calling it the Star of Alex, instead of the Star of David. Okay, boys and girls, that's enough. I've dragged this video out far too long. I'll hopefully put down in the comments where the solution starts. However, you've already passed that, so it's no use going back and reading the comments. Uru, keep safe still. Oh, look, while I'm here, just a quick addition. Um, even though this one was down the line, so the fit was virtually perfect, I still had a lot of trouble putting it together. However, once it got buffed up on the buffer with the polished sides, you didn't have the friction of MDF against MDF and it does slide in easier. The other one you really had to coax in and once you coaxed it in, you had to actually manipulate it by corner by corner to actually take it apart and I thought, holy hell, that's going to be a bugger. But once I buffed it up, um, or sanded it and buffed it up because the sanding probably, well, theoretically it shouldn't because the pressure was on the sides. But either way, um, it just made it so much easier. As you can see, um, oops, I knew I shouldn't have, oh no, there we are. And of course, a good way to take it apart is just to give it a spin. Um... But there you have it, okay, this time, uru, have a good weekend, catch you later, just wait till the next, although I haven't got one planned yet, yes I have, uru. And to prove to those skeptics that poo poo, the shit I talk about on the videos, there we go. Come on, let's, don't prove me wrong baby, here we go, there, let's zip this up, I mean I've just finished glue up, and here we have the first of our victims, um, look I'll do it this way, hold it down, grab my saw, grab my little doobie, one, two, 
three that's now ready to well trim up a little bit more with the chisel grab another one one two three look I'm not gonna go and do the whole lot for you but after this comes a hard part of sanding back all the spilt glue uh, and buffing uh, look I don't mind making these bloody things but buffing is what gets me but anyway that's another problem